Hello everyone, Gilly here. I was recently hanging out with a friend of mine who's implementing a Heinle Milner type inference algorithm, and it kind of inspired me to get back into this compiler, parser, uh, kind of weeds of programming, this rabbit hole of programming. So I figured what better way to do that than playing with the SKI Combinator calculus. It's light, it's fun, it's cool. Um, you may not know what it is. Basically what it is is it's the idea that using these three combinators from Lambda Calculus, S, K, and I, we can compute anything that can be computed. So just these three combinators taken together are Turing complete. Now, even though they're Turing complete, they are in that general category of things called uh, Turing tar pits, which are programming languages that, although capable, are not very practical to actually code in. They may become unwieldy as you're trying to do non-trivial things. That being said, we're gonna embrace the SKI calculus in this video, and we're gonna try to implement and play with them and just see what we can do just to get back into the swing of things. So here I've got a fresh stack project. I'm gonna be using stack, and we're gonna start with tests. I have just the total template stuff that's generated here. If we run it, it compiles and it fails, so that's good, or it doesn't fail, but it doesn't do anything interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look up how to do a basic hspec project, um, and we're going to just copy in the template here and prune it down to some bare essentials. This is gonna be kind of a test-driven exploration of SKI to a degree, so I don't care about quick check yet, I don't care about catching exceptions quite yet, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the package file that stack gives us so nicely, and we're going to add hspec to the tests, and this should compile, this is just a boilerplate test using some prelude functions, and we're going to start to actually code up what we want to code up here, so Let's call a new function eval, which is going to, it's really more of a reduction than an evaluation, but eval is kind of what I'm familiar with, so we'll stick with it. But basically what it is going to do is reduce these expressions down. And to start, we'll start with something really simpler, really simple, i reduces to i. So if you don't know what i is, i is the identity function, it takes a value and it returns it. and if we're just evaluating i, we can't really do anything interesting with just i, so we're going to reduce it down to i. So, well actually I guess that's not a reduction, it's just identity function. <laughs> I guess eval of i is equivalent to identity function, but anyways, i digress. So this is what we're going for. If we eval i, we get back i. <clears throat> And when we run this, we get failures everywhere because eval and i are not defined, of course. So let's go to our source file. And let's go ahead and define them. So data ski equals i. And we'll just cheat and say eval of a value is the value. So we're just going to actually define it as the identity function at the moment, which is a little funny. We'll just export these directly. Not the best practice. It'd be nice to maybe export some functions that construct them, but that should be fine for now. And we're going to export a val. So if we run this, this should pass. Oop, it would pass if we imported lib, which is where our code lies. And we are getting a failure because when our testing library runs this, if it finds a failure, it wants to print out the actual value versus the expected value. So what we're going to do is we're going to derive show. And that's queuing me, keying me into the fact that we're going to get another error, which is EQ. Basically, it wants to do a comparison here. Uh, should be actually says, is this thing equal to the other thing? So it's actually the test that we want to run. And uh, we can just derive EQ for now. This isn't great. This isn't true really as we'll see there are other th there are many expressions in fact an infinite number of expressions that are equal to any given expression in SKI so this isn't exactly a great EQ definition but it'll suit our purposes for this so there we go uh, eval I reduces to I easy we got it all done just kidding um, so next we could do something like we talked about I I so taking I and applying it to I and we can kind of we can wrap this in parens put a space between it to make it more clear so if we apply the I function to I 
this comes back as I. So this is one of those things I was talking about where, um, you know, there are many things that are equivalent. And in fact, I felt comfortable saying there are infinity things that are equivalent to any expression because I can wrap this in a call to I infinite number of times. There's no upper bound to the number of times you can do that. Mathematically speaking, of course. <clears throat> so what we're going to need is we're going to do something new, like an application. We'll call it app I to I. So an app of I to I should end up being I. So let's go ahead and compile this. It's going to fail because app isn't defined. And then we'll go ahead and just define app. So an app is going to be something that takes a ski on the left and a ski on the right. And of course this should fail because we expected i as the result, but we got back app of i to i. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to just go ahead and start to encode these kind of in a silly way. So um, I'm actually hmm I'm actually going to just do this really, really dumb for now. This is not at all correct, and uh, we have missing pad. Well, if I move this here, we're technically covering everything, but you know, this isn't going to be right. It's going to break down very shortly, but it will make our tests pass at the moment. So that's cool. So let's figure out what we can do to actually break our tests now. Well, if we make either of these a little bit more complicated, our tests will break. Um, let's do that. Let's start with the right side. I think that might be interesting to start with. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, well, we're just going to do this. So we've got an application of I to an application of I to I. So what we're going to do is we're going to just um, run the, well, app of I. I did that a little wrong. Whoa. App of I to I. And that should still be I uh, because of this function, if we're doing this, we'll just write it out like this. We're going to apply this to this, which returns the I. And then this function is going to be applied to this, which just returns this I. And then we end up with just an I, so we can't actually do anything. So cool. Uh, and we're failing because, well, uh, we're falling into this case right here and just returning back the overall expression. So now we need to get a little more clever. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the second part variable to actually catch this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to eval. Well, the interesting thing is if we have an app where i is on the left side, we just want an eval of the right side because app of i is just going to return the right side. So we should build eval x here. And I think this may actually be enough to make our test pass. Yes, it is enough to make our test pass. That's cool. So let's attack the left side now, because that's still not great. So let's say we just had something like this, where we have i to i applied to i. I think this will break our tests. So let's go ahead and run that. Yep, because we're hitting this fall through case again. So here we actually will just do a new case split. And if we hit just anything here, um, we'll call it, you know, this is the function, this is the value, uh, or we'll call it like function arg, or x is fine here, I think. Um, what we want to do is we want to eval the f, and we're probably going to have to eval the x, but hmm, we already hmm. This is this is interesting. I'm not entirely actually sure what to do here, um, so I'm just going to do enough to make the test pass. So evaling the f should get us back. Um, evaling the f should get us back an i. So if I eval the overall application, that should get us enough. So if I do eval eval f and the thing on the left this is going to be an app of x that should be enough we'll see if i miss something okay that's good so now we're just going to um 
do something even more wild. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> we are going to just nest these things kind of in a wild way. So we're going to do this. And really, this is probably about a good time for a property-based test, if I'm being honest. But we're going to do something like this. Um, <laughs> as silly as that might seem, this should just break any kind of hard coding we might have. So, so I think we have to go to every open paren and replace that with an app. And we should have an equivalent expression. And actually, that works. And in a way, that surprises me, if I'm being entirely honest. But maybe we should walk through it. Um, so let's see. So at the very outermost level, we're going to be matching an app, not of i, of something arbitrary, and then something else arbitrary. So that's going to fall through to this case. So that's going to do is that's going to eval. OK, so what's happening here is this is recursing depth wise on the left side. Um, that's good. What happens if we stick like a, hmm. are we biased to one side? Like what happens if we stick a app here? I think it's still okay. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's still okay. Yeah, so we're going to go here. We're going to evaluate the left side. So we're going to traverse down the left, keep applying this way. Eventually, we are going to hit an app of i to an x, which means we're going to evaluate the right side. We're going to do this. OK, so yeah, I, I think it's good. This is kind of shocking. Um, but let's uh, let's move on. So. I. We've covered I. Let's, oh, maybe not, maybe we haven't covered I. There might be something I'm missing here. That's where, again, a property-based test would come in handy. Maybe we should do one. Hmm. Let's see. Should we do one? Yeah, we probably should. Um, so what I want is a property-based test. I'm going to do a new type here. This is going to get a little complicated. I'm going to do a new type, which is going to be expression with only i and app. So basically what we want to do is we want to generate a binary tree. And since it's just a binary tree, we shouldn't have to worry too much about sizing here. But anyways, um, this is going to just wrap a ski. You can just do that. So let's go ahead and add quick check to our package. OK, we've got quick check. Let's go ahead and write, uh, let's write an arbitrary instance for this thing. So instance arbitrary this where and basically what we want to do is we want to at any branch either choose to do either an app or an i. So arbitrary equals, and I think we can do elements here. Let's bring up Google just so that we can do some searches real time and figure out if we're doing the right thing. Elements, give me a, no, we don't want elements actually, but elements is close to what we want. I think we want choose choice choose no not choose one of one of is what we want give me another generator a list of generators and I'll do I'll give you back a single generator so we want one of all lowercase it's either going to be I and we have to pure the I or it's going to be an app applied to an arbitrary to an arbitrary. I think we want something like that. Uh, arbitrary is not in scope. We have to import test. Quick check. Couldn't match ski with that. Okay, uh, because we have to take the whole thing. We have to wrap it in our constructor here. 
No instance arbitrary ski arriving from. Okay. Um, this should be okay. Okay. So we've got to yeah uh, yeah yeah yeah. We've got to unwrap this. So un expr with expri app. We'll call it, which isn't the greatest, but. So basically what we want to do is we want to get back some arbitrary and we want it to always be one of these things. And actually we don't we don't need all this. We can just make this a little more verbose and just say uh, you know a uh, function is arbitrary value is arbitrary and then you're still choosing just between i and app of uh, let's see app of f of x and now we are in a world where we actually want to bring this back to elements let's see how we did I think we're pretty close okay we are we got it so this should now give us a tree back of only I and app of course that's all our data structure actually has I should have said this earlier but um, we're gonna add more to it soon so I want to make this test still a thing in the future. Uh, let's see, so what does a property test look like? We can just copy this example property test. And it uh, arbitrary arbitrarily nested applications of I only reduce to I. <clears throat> okay, so what we can do is we can actually uh, use this little trick where we just unwrap this thing. So this is going to be like ski. And then what this is going to have is this is just going to say eval ski equals I. Let's see how we did. No instance for show this thing. Uh, why do we need a show? It's property. Oh, I guess property prints out. It prints out the value it generated. That's right. So driving show. We don't really care too much here. But yeah, I mean, it's working. It looks good. Maybe we can. Hmm. Can we print this thing just to kind of get a better feel for the kind of structures it's generating? Print ski. Print ski. Couldn't match IO with type bool. Okay, okay, okay. We should be to just convert it to monadic context. Okay, yeah, look at that. Those are the kind of things that we would want to pass down here as arbitrary. So that's cool. This is neat. Yeah, look at that. Lots of eyes because the first decision it has to make is between an eye and an application, which means inherently, you know, half of our tests, roughly speaking, are going to be um, just I. But we'll live with that. It's cool. And yeah, that's pretty cool. And actually, this this makes tests like this kind of redundant. And it makes it actually kind of makes a lot of these tests redundant. But we'll keep them around. I don't think they hurt. So. That's cool. Let's go ahead and start looking at K. K, K, K. This should be fun. Um, so we can use, since we have I, we can start to use it and K to kind of make sure K is choosing the right thing. So just K is going to reduce to just K. That's another thing that once we get to it, it's too simple. It's one of our atomic things, we can't actually reduce it any further. Um, we could potentially expand it, because there are lots of different ways to represent k, but we can't reduce it. Okay. Ah, I get it. Okay. Um, here's k. Let's see if it's happy with that. And crazily enough, our code actually handles that, because this is falling through to this case. So now we get into the fun stuff, though. So. I don't know if I want to deal with this just yet, but what happens if I just give something like K of I? Ooh, that's an interesting problem. Um, maybe we can just say uh, tr 
true should be true. I know there's a way to do two, to do like pending tasks. Make me like pending, I think it is. To do. Um, maybe just like this. Okay, uh, that's okay. Uh, we'll keep it like that for now. And we'll get back to that because I think there are other things we can do that might be easier and more prudent to do first, maybe. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to use K and I to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So if we have K applied to, let's say applied to I, and then later applied to K, well, k is a function that looks like this. It's going to take a value, another value. It's the const combinator. And it's going to turn back the first value. It's const, if you're familiar with the Haskell function. So what this is going to do is this is going to hold on to the i. And then when we apply it to k, it's going to throw away k and give us back i. So eval. This is going to be a little hairy to write. App k of i. And then we have k should be i. Yeah, cool. Uh, this is redundant, which is kind of nice. Uh, the lambda calculus application of, you know, binding tightly to what's on the left and then applying outwards, um, it it works in Haskell too. So this is redundant here. We can do this if we like. Um, pretty nice, but we're just going to do it like this for now. Just to be, oh, actually, you know what? Ah, I, I was wrong. This needs an app, which means it doesn't work. My bad. I was getting a little ahead of myself there. Um, this is cool. We have an infinite recursion. That was, <laughs> that was quick, huh? That was really quick. So, yeah, uh, let's figure this out. We keep applying F, we keep evaling. This should return a K. Yeah, so it looks like we have like a mutual recursion that's going on here and causing problems. So we eval the thing on the left, which is going to end up being a K when we get to that inner function. Evaling just a K returns back just the K. No good. Um, <clears throat> if we return back just the K, we're going to get an app of K. Then we're going to apply it again. That's going to come back here. We're going to try to eval the k. It's going to come back here. Yep. We have a pretty clear and blatant infinite recursion going on. So for this, I kind of want to think a little bit about what's going on here. Because there might be some kind of trick we can pull. So if we have a k, if we have a k, and it's applied to an i, what does that do? Well, that takes something like, you know, a, b to a, and we'll re represent uh, the i in terms of x, just to kind of differentiate here. So it applies that to x, to x, okay. And then we can do a substitution here for the a. So that gives us back b applied to the function lambda x to x. OK, so what does that mean? Well, I think you can rewrite this. I'm pretty sure you can rewrite this like this. So lambda b x to x. OK, yep, that's good. So what this is doing is this is going to throw away its argument and give you back i. Yep, so that's what we want, because of course this thing is kind of syntactic sugar for i. But is this is there a simpler thing here? Is, is there something interesting here that we can use or reduce? Um, I, don't, I don't think in just this we can. I don't think in SKI there's a straightforward representation of this, at least not one that springs to mind. Um, I'm sure there's a way, there's gotta be a way to represent it 
uh, other than just saying ki, right? Because ki is what we were given at first. Because, uh, you know, like I said, there's an infinite way to represent things. We could, of course, just say i, ki, or i, i, ki, which gets into absurdity pretty quickly. But we're not going to do that. I, I Well, maybe, maybe we can. Maybe we can do that. Maybe k is simple enough that we can do that. So let's let's do it. So what we want to do is we want we're just going to get super crazy with this whole thing and we're going to make a thing called hmm hmm ooh we're going to make a thing called k remainder. I don't really want to introduce a new thing. Hmm Ooh. I guess no, no. We should we should be able to hand. Hmm. Man, I keep I keep uh. <laughs> I mean, we could we could do something like this, right? Where we do case evaluation, and we say if we see app of k to you know something, and then we see that whole result applied to something else this whole thing just goes to x right that would work but is that wrong um i don't know let's just do it and see where we end up with that so eval so if we have an application of an application of k to some x and then an application of that result to y that ends up with x. Now, yeah, it just throws away the y. Um, that's cool. We'll roll with it. Our compilation never finished. That's so funny. OK, that's cool. Now, let's make sure that it's choosing the right value. I mean, it, it pretty clearly is. But if we just switch the k and the i, we should see the k come out on this side. So if we do k, k, and then we do i here should get the K out okay and that worked okay but we probably are in kind of a weird spot now um, it almost feels like we need the concept of a partial function um, or we need to just be more clever about our K's floating around um, hmm do, 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 do. Let's try, hmm. let's try something different. Let's try, okay, I think I see one thing that might break us. So let's try bringing this in. I'm just gonna say it test. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to eval. Um, we know these things should always be I, right? So if we if we're fully reducing this, we should say k of i. You bring this full screen too. If we take that and apply it to, you know, anything over here, uh, we could just say k because we know. Or wait, this whole thing should just reduce. This whole thing should just reduce to i right because we know this thing should reduce to i and this k it shouldn't contain a k and this k should get thrown away so let's see what that does okay yep easy we break because we're missing a reduce okay so can we just do an eval here is that good does that work maybe Let's go ahead and try it. Okay, it works for that case at least. Um, so I guess we'll just say k arg mint reduces. And now we're going to get into the interesting case because I think we're ready. Um, so, and really, you know, I think I've been using the wrong terminology. I should just say i is not reduce a bull. 
how do you say that? Is irreducible. Irreducible. Um, and then we should say the same thing for k. k is irreducible. And then we should say, really, I think what we want to do here is we just want to say k of i is irreducible. It's not the greatest thing in the world to say, um, but it's true. If we get a k of i, uh, we can't reduce it, so we should just get back a k of i. k of i should be k of i. And I always forget my little apps. And we don't actually need these parens. Let's see how this works. Um, ooh. K is irreducible passed, but K of I is irreducible failed. Um, and it's failing with another infinite recursion. Okay. Let's see what we got going here. So, uh, if we, so we're immediately falling down to this case right here. And when we fall down to that case, oh no, we're not, that's not true. We're falling down to this case. If we fall down to this case, yep, this is the same old, same old. Um, maybe we need a special case here for K. Ooh. Yeah, so if we if we get to a point where we have an application of k to something, we can't really reduce that. Now, we might be able to reduce this value here, but let's worry about that later. Okay, we pass. So to think about reducing that value, we should... Um, K, K of X in K of X we can't get rid of K but X it should be reduced okay so we can take a property so we can't get rid of X so we have an application did I say X? I meant K. We can't get rid of K, but ski should end up being reduced. So this should end up with app K of I, because that's what the reduction looks like of ski in our arbitrary instance. Okay, so now we need to go back and we probably just need to eval this thing over here. Okay, that's good. And Let's hmm, let's just make sure that we're doing the right thing. Let's just say k of k is irreducible. Okay, it is irreducible. Just out of curiosity, what is, I'm curious, what is k of k? Is that something special? Let's see. So k, and we'll write it again uh, using a's and b's and then x and y's on the right hand. So a, b, this thing maps. So I guess this is weird syntax. Huh? Let's just use dots. That's a little more standard for the kind of thing I'm saying here. x, y, x. OK, so what does this do? We can sub the a with this thing on the right. So we get lambda b dot lambda x y dot x. So that goes to lambda b x y dot x. So really this is a function that's saying, oh wow, interesting. So it makes a function that takes an arg, throws it away, takes an arg, preserves it, and then takes another arg and throws it away. That's uh that's kind of interesting. Maybe we can maybe we can test that. Maybe we can do k 
K and then I or something like that. So what that or wait. We could do K K hmm. We could do K K an I that we can reduce to well hmm. Not gonna worry too much about this. Let's see. Yeah. That didn't have any interesting results. We can kind of skip over that for now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think everything's good here. I'm trying to think of the, the pathological edge case at this point. I bet I'm missing things. So let's just think about what we've got going here. We've got a special case for K. We've got a special case for I. Got a special case for K. Um, yeah, I think it's looking good. Um, maybe we have a problem about evaluating what's on the right hand side. No, we shouldn't. I don't think we, I don't think we do. I don't think we do. So we could probably do another property at this point. I'm kind of thinking a little bit and determining if we have a K, this is an interesting property. If we have a K applied to something and that whole thing is applied to something else, if we ever have a structure like this, um, we can say, well, Hmm. Can we can we say there are no k's in our result if it's a certain size? I kind of wonder about that. If the result no no we can't say that the size doesn't really mean a lot because we can have like i to k i so like there's three terms two applications um, this would give us back k. We can't say that the K gets erased in that case. Um, no, I think I think we got good enough coverage for now. We'll play with it a little bit more. I'm sure I'm missing things. This feels like it's got to be missing something. So let's hop over to S and see what we can do with S. Um, let's see. I always forget the definition of S, but here it is right here. It's substitution. It takes three arguments and then returns the first argument applied to the third which is then applied to the result of the second argument applied to the third. More clearly, here it is. So, yeah, the pros, this is one of those things where the English isn't great to describe it, but when you see it, it's not too bad. So, S applied to X, applied to Y, applied to Z, equals X, I'm just gonna space things out a little bit, equals this thing right here. So, um, the first obvious thing we can see here well, we kind of want to copy some of the patterns of K. So S is irreducible is true. S should be S. S is not defined. So let's go ahead and define it. Okay. And then we have some of those same ideas as um, K, where, well, actually, you know what? It's not exactly the same, is it? In fact, there's a lot of interesting things that can happen here, and this is why S is included. S provides us with a lot of power. Um, for example, if this X is an I, then it's going to just get rid of itself. It's going to choose this, so to speak. If this S, X is a K, it's going to choose this Z. It's going to get rid of everything over here. So that's kind of curious. Maybe we can play with that a little bit. So, yeah, and these actually might be simpler forms. Um, but maybe, maybe it would be best to not delve too deeply into this just yet. Let's try something simpler. Let's just try a bunch of I's. And here I'm going to start dropping parens, but 
if you see something like that, you know, this means this and then this and then the other one. This is reduces to i. So if we apply this to i, and then if we apply this to i, and then if we apply this to i, this should just be i. And we have an error because again, with k, we were just kind of getting into a loop where we kept trying to evaluate k, we turned back k, we tried to evaluate the apply with k, we d dug down and tried to evaluate k, we, yeah, just repeated. Um, so let's go ahead and let's do this. I'm going to take the same, since it seemed to work out okay for k, I'm going to take the same approach we took. This is maybe not the best, um, and there's got to be some reduction here that I'm missing, but basically what we're looking at is something like if we have a structure like this where we have an S and then we have an X and then we have a Y and then we have a Z we're going to do this thing over here <clears throat> so we're going to apply X to the Z then we're going to apply that to the result of applying the y to the z. And what we want here is an eval, because we want to reduce this thing. And I'm probably jumping ahead by adding that, but whatever. Well, maybe not, because we might need our eyes to actually eval out here. We'll, we'll try it. Ooh. What in the world? Why is it going so slow? Hey, it passed though. So let's go ahead and remove this eval that I said I may have been jumping ahead by adding. I bet I wasn't actually jumping ahead because I don't think our function is going to reduce otherwise. Yeah, we got all these applications of i to i. Okay, cool. I don't know why that was so slow. Um, <clears throat> that's cool. Let's go ahead and just do some more edge cases, one-offs, until I can maybe think of a better term. It's getting a little bit late, so I'm uh, having a little bit of trouble thinking through this, but that's life. So let's see. Actually, I want that definition back. It was very useful for figuring this stuff out. So like I said before, if we do, um, if we do a K here, the K is going to choose the first thing and not put us through this path here. So we should theoretically be able to uh, run that, give it a K, and make sure this thing doesn't come back here. So we should be able to do something like this, where we say like um, K is the first value, and then Z would be the... Uh, ooh, that actually ends up working on both ways. Let's do SKKI. Would that do it? So here S gets applied to K, so this would be a K. Z would be an I. And then your Y is going to be a K. And your Z is going to be an I. So what K is going to do is K is going to pick this I, not KI. KI is not reducible, so we have a meaningful test. This should reduce to I. Cool. So S to K, K, I. Okay. That seems to work. And it looks like I've copied this other test twice. That's cool. Um, let's just make sure, let's make sure it all, hmm. No, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. We can, hmm. Uh, I'm actually I'm actually feeling pretty good about that to start out with. Um, we can start to use our S to test other kind of wild things. Like now that we have three terms, maybe we can go back to this idea of KK. 
yeah let's go back to it really quickly let's go back to it so we have lambda a b dot a applied to lambda x y dot x we can sub the a which gives us lambda b dot lambda x y dot x which can be rewritten as lambda b x y yielding x so now we can do things like you know if we call this thing so if we did like k k k i s k uh, these two together would yield this thing which we'd apply to i and i would get i would go to b which would get thrown away s would go to x which would get kept here and then k would get thrown away so we should be able to do that let's give it a shot it reduces kk isk reduces to s kk i s see how that works out for us and it worked okay that's cool super cool um, let's see is there anything else we care to do here hmm I guess we should try we really should try some more properties I think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. if we're fully reducing things correctly we should never see something like this this might be a hard property to express, but we should never see k applied to two things, right? This is always this should always just reduce down to x. So no matter where this thing gets nested in an expression, no matter how complicated x is, no matter how complicated y is, this pattern shouldn't exist in a reduced expression. Likewise, if we see s applied to x, y, z, this pattern shouldn't exist anywhere in a sub expression because we have an ability to actually apply this thing. So yeah, I think we should test these two properties. I think that would be good. So to do that, I think we're going to get into the world of um, <laughs> actually making an arbitrary instance for the overall thing. And I think that's probably fine to do. Let's see. Yeah, application is still just choosing things uh, as a binary tree. 50% chance every node will terminate. So yeah, I, th I think I think we're good to do it. Let's do it. So instance, this is actually gonna be an orphan instance if we put it here. I don't wanna put it there as an orphan. I'm gonna put it over here. So we're gonna go ahead and import quick check. And we're gonna say arbitrary equals um, same kind of pattern really this but we're also really now we need potentially three terms so we're just gonna do we're just gonna make these generic we're gonna lose our nice naming saying what things are oh no 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 I'm wrong applications still only take two arguments so really we can keep these f of x and then we just we just need s and k in our list of possible things um, and yeah we don't need this constructor anymore do we still compile uh, we don't because quick check is only a dependency in our tests so let's go ahead and add it here um, did I add the wrong thing Oh, I added it to the executables dependencies, not the library dependencies. Silly me. Okay, so that's good. So now we should be able to write these properties and these should be kind of cool ones. Um, again, we're making sure there's no Ks in that form 
and we're making sure there's no S's in the other form. This is where things could get kind of kind of interesting. So K with two args cannot exist in reduced expressions. So give me some ski. Let's go skiing. Um, and this is going to be a little bit trickier than just a straight up equality. So we'll extract out a function to actually help us do this work. Um, does not contain k with two args. And actually, we're going to do this differently. We're going to say not contains k with two args. That way, we don't have to do like a double negative thing or, yeah, like figure it out and then invert it. We'll just figure it out. So, yeah. And we can actually do a dollar sign or a dot here. We'll do a dollar sign just to keep it consistent and actually <laughs> while we're here this can be point free we'll make it point free just for fun so this can be like changed like this like this and then this can be changed like that contains k with two args isn't defined which is good and it's telling us what the type should be so let's go ahead and let's put this here and basically what we're looking for is if the expression is an application and the expression is an application of k to anything. And there's an application of this to this. Yeah, that thing, that thing is a k applied to two args. We don't want that. That can't, that can't be. Otherwise, um, we're going to have to figure out for an application Does the left side contain this, or does the right side contain this? Otherwise, we've hit some, yeah, we have pretty good case matching now. So otherwise, we've hit some term like I false, K false, S false. Um, and now I am going to start doing, let me open my terminal up. I'm going to start doing stack test fast pedantic just to make sure I'm covering the cases that I should be covering. Stack test fast pedantic. Okay. Uh, tuple binding with no signature. Okay, so this is going to complain about a few other things, but these are things we probably should do anyways. So we'll go ahead and just cover them real quick. So eval is going to go from a ski to a ski. Uh, define but not used y. Okay, that was just convenience that I did that. So really, we can just use underscores here. That's fine, no problem. And the reason I turned that on was just... Um, Okay, argument reduces. The reason I turned that on was just because I um, wanted to make sure I had case coverage here. So <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, it looks like we are generating <laughs> either too big of a tree or um, we're potentially generating something that evaluates infinitely like the Y combinator. I, I wonder if that's even possible. Did we, did our arbitrary instance throw us back something like the Y combinator uh, in such a way that it recurses forever? Is that possible? It's gotta be, right? Because we are turning complete. We should be able to loop forever. So theoretically an arbitrary instruction should be able to loop forever, even when that's not extremely complex. So this may have actually, in hindsight, not been the greatest test in the world, um, unfortunately. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, backing that out. <laughs> okay, for some reason, my recording paused before finishing, but basically I stumbled around a little bit more, and then I went to Wikipedia 
the article again and I found these examples and encoded them and they all seem to pass. So <laughs> not proof that this is correct, but certainly evidence that maybe it can handle some cases. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching.